If you're in any retro tech circles at all, you probably heard about Unleashed Recompiled. This thing dropped like a bomb and reverberated throughout the community with a resounding, they can do that? Well, yeah. In fact, if you've been following along the scene, most of the technologies involved in this have been around for quite some time. They've just never been brought together in such a nicely made package and to port such a high profile game before. There's a lot to talk about here and I can't wait to get into it, but first, let's get our sponsor out of the way. PCBWay is your one-stop shop for making just about anything electronic. They make PCBs, obviously, but they also do plastic injection molding, metal machining, and can even assemble the whole thing for you. They recently invited me to tour their factory, and it is massive. The amount of work and expertise here is absolutely insane, but the results speak for themselves. You really can get an entire gadget created here, and for some upcoming projects of mine, I wouldn't choose anyone else. Be sure to check them out at PCBWay.com. But now back to Unleashed Recomp. Okay, so to understand this port, we first need to understand the concept of recompilation and how it contrasts from decompilations that we're all familiar with. A decompilation, as I've talked about many times before, is using information and context clues from a compiled executable to manually reproduce a code base that's as close to the original source code as possible. A recompilation is almost the other way around. Here you don't care whether it looks like the original source code, hell, you don't even care if it's human readable. All you care about is that instructions from one language have been converted into equivalent instructions for another language. This is not a new concept, in fact, you've almost certainly encountered it before since it's one of the most common ways to write an emulator. Basically, when emulating a certain CPU architecture, rather than slowly interpreting each instruction one by one as it comes, you can write what's called a dynamic recompiler to translate or recompile those instructions ahead of time into equivalent instructions for your host CPU. The benefit of this is that whenever that code is run again, no translation of any kind will be required because the code is already in the host CPU's native language. Unleashed Recompiled used what's called static recompilation, which takes that concept a step further. Rather than just caching native instructions into memory for a single play session, it saves them into some kind of permanent medium so the translated code can be reused. And if, instead of translating to instructions for your host CPU, you translated them to C or C++ code, well, what you end up with is a compilable code base with a fraction of the manual effort that decomp would have taken. But again, just because it's compilable doesn't mean you've suddenly got source code. By recompiling machine code into C, you're not undoing the compilation process, you're just recreating the machine code instructions in C. The difference may sound subtle, but it's actually pretty huge. Take a look at this code example, a simple function written in C, that same function compiled into x86, and then that x86 code recompiled. Is it compilable C? Yes. Does it do the same thing? Yes. But it definitely isn't the same code that went in. It's much harder to read and understand what it's doing, and you can't call or modify this function in the same way that you could the original because, effectively, it's still internally mimicking an x86 CPU. That's what I mean when I say you're not undoing the compilation process. You haven't actually gotten away from machine code, you've just turned it into a form that can be run through a compiler again. And unlike real source code or a decomp, this makes for a decidedly more rigid and inflexible code base. But there are still advantages to having a code base, even in this state. Crucially, C and C++ code, by design, is very portable and can be easily compiled to just about any platform out there. This too is not a new concept. All the way back in the 90s, the game Sonic 3D Blast was ported to PC and Sega Saturn by recompiling the 68K assembly for the Genesis into C++ using an internal tool. It's not even a new concept for the Xbox 360. Back in 2017, a project known only as Recompiler used the infamous Dolphin demo from the Xbox SDKs to demonstrate a proof-of-concept Xbox 360 game ported to Windows by way of a compilable C++ codebase. However, it never ended up making a lot of progress beyond that point. All of this is to say that yes, while it's far from some magic auto-decompilation, it is very much possible to produce a compilable code base from an already compiled executable. And if you're willing to pour a lot of time and effort into molding that code base, you can make something like, well, Unleashed Recompiled. Unleashed Recompiled is an unofficial port and remaster of Sonic Unleashed to Windows, Linux, and soon to be Mac OS, finally achieving a long time dream for a lot of devoted Sonic fans. Why? Well, Sonic Unleashed is an interesting story. Released in 2008, it came hot off the heels of the notorious Sonic 06, and while it was commercially successful, selling nearly 2.5 million copies, the critics' sentiment was mixed at best. While its conventional, fast-paced 3D Sonic gameplay was well-received, its frequent shifts into slower, combat-heavy beat-em-up stages were heavily criticised. It didn't help that due to poor optimization across the board, the game struggled to hit its target 30 frames per second, especially on the notoriously hard-to-develop-for PS3. 
And so a game that was initially highly anticipated as a potential comeback for Sonic ended up being considered yet another embarrassment by Sega. And that's how it was seen for quite some time, just another bad Sonic game from the mid to late 2000s. However, over time, things have changed pretty dramatically. Retrospective appraisals have swung a lot more positive, particularly as the kids who grew up with the game have entered adulthood and become nostalgic for it. The daytime sections, even with the poor performers, are pretty universally adored, and even the much maligned Werehog stages have found their fans. The result is a strong cult following that wants nothing more than to be able to play and preserve Sonic Unleashed in the best way possible, but doing so is harder than you might expect. Obviously you can play on original hardware, but as I've mentioned, this is ironically a fairly suboptimal experience. It runs at not quite 720p and is locked at 30fps on the Xbox 360. And while the frame rate is technically unlocked on the PS3, that's only because it struggles even getting to 30, let alone higher. Meanwhile, emulators, the conventional way to play console games on PC, have also been a pretty mixed bag here. For years, Xbox 360 emulator Xenia was unable to run the game without severe game-breaking issues. It got to the point where the community forked Xenia just to make modifications that, while not accurate to the original hardware, made Sonic Unleashed at least playable. PS3 emulator RPCS3 did a lot better overall, but owing to the considerable complexity of the hardware, it required a significantly more powerful computer to get a decent result. The PS3 version of the game is also considered inferior in general due to worse optimization and various glitches and bugs resulting from a haphazard porting job. It's so rough that Sega even removed one of the loading cutscenes in the PS3 version because it takes so long to load that the cutscene barely helps to mask it. But despite all of this community effort just to play Sonic Unleashed on PC, Sega has proven reluctant to provide any kind of remaster or even just a basic port. While we don't know for sure why, it's safe to assume it's because of how poorly received it was at launch. I mean, back in 2010, Sega announced they would delist all games with below average scores on Metacritic, Unleashed very much included, and that policy seems to have largely persisted ever since. Though they have made some small efforts to up the frame rate cap when playing the 360 version on the Xbox One and Xbox Series through backwards compatibility, even going so far as to rebadge the 360 version with Xbox One branding. But whether that's mostly a push from Sega or Microsoft is unknown. Officially, playing on newer Xboxes with those mild enhancements is the best way to play Sonic Unleashed, but it's still a far cry from Sega's high-profile remasters and re-releases of games like Sonic Colors and Sonic Generations. All of this hope met with continual disappointment made a PC port of Sonic Unleashed the white whale of the Sonic community. What especially stung was seeing development footage and photos from the era of the game clearly running on PC. While it's quite common to develop console games on PC and doesn't necessarily mean it was ready for an official PC port, it does indicate that getting it to that point wouldn't have been significantly more work had Sega chosen to do so. But as tends to happen on this channel, it ended up being up to the community to ultimately get the ball rolling on this. For a while, the community's solution was interesting. It turns out Sonic Generations, a much more highly praised game that did end up on PC, uses exactly the same in-house engine known as Hedgehog Engine 1. And while by no means a plug and play thing, it was very possible, through a lot of work and reverse engineering, to make Generations play a lot like Unleashed. As far as the more conventional 3D Sonic stages, they got extremely close, being able to load the same stages and even the same physics values. However, there was always an elephant in the room. How are they going to port the Werehog stages? Love them or hate them, they are a significant part of the game, and without them it's emphatically not the same game. While not theoretically impossible to decompile those parts and graft them onto Sonic Generations, it would have been an enormous amount of work that was intimidating to even think about. But everything changed in May 2024 with the N64 Recomp project. Like I said, static recompilation is not a new concept, but this was the first time a project had really proven what was possible to the wider community. The N64 has always been a popular target for reverse engineering due to a confluence of having unique fan-favorite games, yet a pretty complex hardware architecture with an emulation scene that, to this day, still leaves much to be desired. The N64 was where community decompilation first made a name for itself for the Super Mario 64 decomp. But that decomp, as well as almost all that have succeeded since, took years to complete. Static recompilation demonstrated that if all you wanted was a compilable codebase and didn't care about how source accurate or human readable it was, you didn't need to spend years of your life painstakingly hand translating assembly. The Unleashed Recomp team were immediately intrigued by this approach as a way to finally achieve a real PC port, or as close to it as possible, but they were still apprehensive about whether it could work for a game as big and complex as Sonic Unleashed. But after seeing a successful recompilation of The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, they were inspired to finally give it a try. In September 2024, they started working on Xenon Recomp, a tool that, you guessed it, recompiles instructions from the Xbox 360's Xenon CPU into C++. 
The team heavily referenced the dynamic recompiler code from Xenia since, naturally, that is the best implementation of the 360's CPU at the moment. And doing this meant the recompiler surprisingly took the least amount of time of any of the work they did. But remember, translating the CPU code is only part of the battle. Xenon Recomp does nothing other than produce C++ code derived from the game. It's up to the user to figure out what to do with it from there. In order to get Unleashed to run nicely on PC, the team had to rewrite large parts of the game, including and especially its graphics system. While it helped that the Xbox 360's graphics pipeline is very similar to Windows' Direct 3D 9, this still required a lot of manual work and reverse engineering to pull off. One of the main reasons this came together as quickly as it did was because the team already had years of experience reverse engineering the Hedgehog engine with Sonic Generations. Once again, a recompilation is by no means a free ticket to modding or porting. They also needed to write an additional tool called Xenos Recomp, not to be confused. While Xenon is the 360's CPU, Xenos is the 360's GPU, and this tool recompiled the game's Xbox 360 shaders into conventional HLSL. While Xenon Recomp is fairly generic and has a good chance of working on most 360 games, Xenos Recomp had to be written to be very specific to Sonic Unleashed. The issue here is, much like the Xbox One compatibility layers I talked about in a previous video, by the time you're having to interpret the low-level instructions of a GPU, you're basically writing a full-blown emulator, which was more than what the team wanted to take on. However, the Xenos Recomp code has still been published since it may prove useful to other projects willing to fork and tailor it to whatever game they're working on. Within only a month of starting, the Unleashed Recomp devs had the game mostly playable on PC, at which point they could focus on fixing bugs, optimizations, and implementing new functionality needed to facilitate a proper PC port. However, the way they did it may surprise you. Rather than making modifications directly to the codebase generated from the recompilation, the team's modifications are actually being made through a system much closer to code injection used in traditional modding projects. This just ended up being the easier thing to do than working around those machine code instructions even though they're in C++. Once again, the main benefit of this approach is that it's easy to recompile on PC. It doesn't give you a malleable source code like a decompilation does. In many ways, it has a lot more in common with something like Prime Hack, a fork of the GameCube emulator Dolphin that makes a number of enhancements to Metroid Prime. In both projects, you're still largely dealing with obscure machine code in that console's architecture, it's just that in Unleashed Recomp, that machine code has been converted to C++ so it can be more easily ported to other platforms without the performance penalty of having to emulate in real time. I don't say this to devalue the achievements of Unleashed Recomp, quite the opposite in fact, they've had to do a tremendous amount of work to make a static recompilation into something as good as this is. I say this to temper your expectations. I've seen a lot of people say this will open the floodgates to porting every Xbox 360 game in existence, and that just isn't what this is. We already have, and have had for a while, a way to play every Xbox 360 game on PC. It's called emulation. And yeah, in the 360's case it's not 100% perfect yet, but unless you're willing to do what these guys did and rewrite large amounts of each game you want to port, then static recompilation doesn't really give you any benefits here. It's undoubtedly a very useful tool for doing certain things, but it still took the team months of solid work built upon years of experience reverse engineering this engine in previous projects. For most games, tried and true emulation is still going to be the fastest and easiest way to get them running on PC. But if the community thinks the game deserves a little extra love and attention, well, this is one of the tools they can do that with. Finally, on March 1st, Unleashed Recomp was formally announced live on stream. I say announced, but it was more like they trolled the audience for 7 hours showcasing various ridiculous mods and only revealed that this was actually a whole new PC port at the very end. And just like that, Sonic Unleashed was on PC, answering the prayers of countless members of the dedicated Sonic community. And in all honesty, it supports more platforms and has more quality of life features than we probably would have gotten had Sega done this officially. In some ways, I feel like this was the game the original developers intended to make, had they had a little more time to optimize it properly. It's actually kind of ironic that a game where speed is such a big component is so notorious for running slowly, but on modern PC hardware it's smooth as butter. The team behind Unleashed Recomp has no plans to work on any other Xbox 360 games. In their mind, this was all in service of porting Sonic Unleashed. However, they've open sourced all of their work and encouraged people to pick up their tools and use them on other games. They're also happy to help answer questions about them if necessary. Just don't expect it to be an instant, out-of-the-box process. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into Unleashed Recomp and Static Recompilation, and I hope it was able to answer a lot of your questions. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye guys.